Uh, salam satu manusia, mana kam? Me again, nani ni armogam from Uniza. So today we're going to talk about business model. Okay, we already did our feasibility analysis. Okay, feasibility analysis simply to see there is any needs for our product or services that we're going to offer, basically on an agro-based product. Second, uh, the fifth chapter, sorry, the fifth chapter we discuss on the industrial analysis as well as competitive analysis. So, industrial analysis, we undergo to understand about, as an entrepreneur, what is my product or services strength or weaknesses compared to my competitor. Besides that, we also talk about competitor analysis. Competitor analysis simply for us to know what are the opportunities available, what can I offer to the market, something that my competitor not yet give or offer to the market. So, for me to know what the opportunities that are available and for me to know the threats that I need to face, okay, that is we talk on chapter 5. Now in chapter 6 or uh, today section, we're going to focus on the how to come up or how to develop a business model, an effective business model. So let us look into the chapter's objective for this business model. Objective of this chapter is simply to describe the meaning of business model, explain to you all what is business model innovation, discuss the importance of a having a clearly articulated business model and also explain the role of business model canvas which introduced or popularized by Alexander Walter What is model? By definition, model is a plan or diagram that used to make or describe something. That is model basically. You can find or you Google the definition in anywhere. Okay, it's simple. So business model basically is a design for the successful operation of business. Identifying revenue sources, customer base, product and detail of financing. Business model also considered as a road map for a small business success. Business model definitely not a business plan. So in this business environment, there is no standard business model, no hard and fast rules that detect how firm in a particular industry should compete. What is the importance of this business model for startup and for the new entrepreneurs uh, or entrepreneurs? So a business model is simply will give you information about your business. Okay? Having a clearly articulated business model is important because it starts the following. Simply, this was business model serves as an ongoing extension of feasibility analysis. A business model continually asks the question, does this business make sense? Means that, does this business can make profit or not? That's all. Okay. Business model also focuses attention on how all the elements of business fit together and constitute a working environment. Business model as well describes why the network of participants needed to make a business idea viable are willing to work together and it also articulates a company core logic to all stakeholders including all employees. Okay, when we talk about business model, if you google, plenty of business model you can find in the search engine. There is no standard business model for any industry or for a target market within an industry. However, over time, the most successful business model is an industry predominant. There are always opportunities for business model innovation. <coughs> Means that there is no clear 
business model or uh, not a proper business model for food industry or for animal based industry or for uh, agriculture based industries okay is according to the, the entrepreneur needs yeah okay to amaze this business model there is a step how i can come up with this business model so we call it as a value change value change concept come from business management and was first described and popularized by michael porter in his 1985 best seller competitive advantage creating and sustaining superior performance the value chain is this string of activities that move a product from the raw material stage through manufacturing and distribution and ultimately to the end of user by studying a product or service value chain an organization can identify ways to create additional value and access whether it has the means to do so value chain analysis is also helpful in identifying opportunity for new businesses and in understanding new businesses as well as our business model mesh so now you can see on michael potter value change that he popularized during his year of <coughs> 1985 okay when you look at this slide okay there is a primary activities in bound logistic operation outbound logistic marketing and sales and services this is are the primary activities that's involved in any kind of business okay then there is a supporting activities firm infrastructure human resource management technology development and resource procurement so uh, primary activity plus supporting activities then you will get some kind of profit margin okay so the entrepreneurs Uh, and entrepreneurs look at the value chain of a product or service to pinpoint where the value chain can be made more effectively or to spot where additional value can be added this type of analysis may focus on a single primary activity such as marketing or sales the interface between one stage of the value chain and another such as the interface between operation and outgoing logistic or one of the support activities activities such as human resource or management looking at the value chain itself we can come up with fantastic ideas if the entrepreneurs really understand the industry whatever industry that you want to involve so if i want to involve in a food industry i should do i should know what type of food are favored by the customer currently the new trend Okay, people are moving towards frozen food. They want instant food. Okay, there is a group of people looking for instant group. Uh, sorry, instant food. There is a group of people who really care about their health, very uh, particular about their health, and they are demanding for organic food. Now, if you go to the market, you simply organic fish. I do not understand, but there is organic fish as a product. been surf in the market and there is a customer who going to buy the particular product there is a demand this type of customer we call them as a niche customer particular who really really concerned where this organic produce nowadays uh, gain more profit compared to the traditional produce the, the normal one okay normal produce fresh produce where the price is very very uh, less compared to the organic uh produce okay so here i just want to share with you about the uh, the normal traditional startup model normally i have idea okay so i want to start a restaurant okay restaurant of course lah what i'm going to serve is a food okay so i get my uh, idea validity uh, validation then i get a setup guidelines okay i already set up a business then i will uh, launch my business after several step that is what i want actually i want to start a restaurant in trangano 
in Gongbada, a uh, Indian restaurant, for example. But I am facing a problem there is a less customer coming to my shop. Only a certain group of people are coming to my shop. Simply that because Gombada majority people's population are Malays, where uh, they are less prefer Indian style of food. So there is not a wise ad uh, advice for me to open up an Indian restaurant in Gombada. Maybe I can open up a restaurant, Indian restaurant with organic Indian restaurant, something like that in Klang Valley because there is a number of quite a big population that prefer a Indian food. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, tolong delete semua yang saya cakap pasal uh, Indian restaurant, tak perlu. Uh, uh, perbualan itu tak perlu. Okay, sekarang I start with the traditional startup model. Lepas ni apa-apa yang saya cakap pasal traditional startup model, tolong ambil uh, untuk rekat. Minta maaf ya. Okay, what I put here is about traditional startup model where when we get idea we so excited we start up our business without considering any external factor or internal factors then we launch a business then we will wait who going to buy our product for this environment I don't think so it can be used this traditional startup model is wrong totally wrong that's why earlier itself, chapter 4, we did a feasibility analysis to just see there is any demand for our product or our services that we are going to offer or not. Then chapter 5, we talk about industry analysis and competitor analysis. But normally traditional people or conservative uh, businessmen, they never look, when they say, oh, there is a business someone is doing a business very well then they also want to start up then the business will be like one year two day two years in the market or they they perform in the market then they close, close shop so that shouldn't be the way okay business model canvas was initially proposed by Alexander Osterwalder based on his earlier work on business model ontology so uh, this is the uh, business model canvas there is a nine element that in this business model canvas okay the first thing that you need to know is who is your customer not only under uh, knowing who is your customer who is going to be your paying customer who going to take out the money and give you okay if Pampers is normally used by baby. The baby is not going to give you the money. The parents, the father or mother, that the one is going to spend money on the pampers. So these people are called as your customer. Identify who is your buying customer. Demanding for your product. Okay, understand, identify them. So start with your customer segment then how are you going to create a customer relationship you don't want your customer come one day to your outlet or one day to have your service you want them to continuously come to your outlet or business place okay for that not only they are coming they bring some more extra people they bring their friend they bring the family they bring their in-laws okay so you want the continuous so there need to be a, a good relationship between you and the customer then make sure what are the channels channels here what channels that you're going to use to distribute your product or distribute your services okay so please identify that okay then the important element is value proposition what uniqueness that you are going to give them when you compare to your competitors of course in the market there will be a similar product or similar services being offered so what kind of different station that you are going to do to the service that available or to the product that already in the market 
So that is called as a value proportion, some uniqueness that make you different from others, that make you sustainable in the market. Okay. Then identify your key activities, what are the key activities that are going to take place, okay. your key resources that you needed for your product or services that you needed, uh, you are going to offer in the market. And who are going to be your key partners, your supplier, who are going to be your key partners? These partners there to enhance your business, so you identify your key partners. Okay. The most important things you have to know, please, please give your uh, consideration structuring the costing for your production. That is very important. Don't ever underestimate your costing or overestimate your costing. Okay? Then you have to know where is the revenue for the uh, business coming from. Okay? You should understand. So you have to be, this will be a, give you a clear picture, not only clear picture to you, to others, to your employer, to your stakeholder, whoever that, look at the, okay, this is the business that you are going to run, so a clear picture. This will help you enhance, improve your business activities as well. So to just recap today lecture, business models, it's very important. That's why I'm talking to you all. Okay? It is very useful for a new venture to look at itself in a realistic manner and understand that is must construct an effective business model to be successful. Everyone that does business with her firm from its customer to its partners does so on voluntary basis. As a result, a firm must motivate its customer and its partner to play along. We are not alone in this game. We are with several people, our customer, our partner, our suppliers. Okay? So we should know how to tackle them, how to entertain them, how to keep them with us for quite a long period of time. And close attention to each primary elements of firm's business model is essential for a new ventures to be success. Okay guys, to conclude today's section on business models, we already know and we, I hope that you will roughly understand what is the need for a business model, why we need to have a business model for a startup. It's easy, it's easy. When you really thoroughly understand the industry, for you it's, it's easy lah. to come up with a business model. You, you, because you are focused, you are clear with your idea. You know what you want to give, what differentiation that you're going to make from your competitor, who going to be your customer, uh, who going to be your channel members, who going to be what value proportion that you're going to give, okay, who going to be your partners, what will be your key activities in your business. Uh, process, what will be your resources, main resources, okay, from where you want to get the main resources, okay, your cost structure, you already plan your cost, cost structures, okay, so you know how much money for startup initially funding, how much money you need to like pump in into your business and you already know where the, where you can get the money, means that your revenues, from where is your revenues. Okay. So again, once again, there is many example of uh, business model for your, if, if you are interested, you just google it, plenties to enhance your knowledge on business models. Okay. See you in next section. Let me finish. Take care. Bye.